Hey guys, welcome back on the second part of the Cartoony Eyelid Rigging tutorial. So now is where the fun stuff starts because now we set up the basic structure for the eye and now we need to control it. Okay? So um one one thing I wanted to specify so is why I think of this as a cartoony uh, eyelid rig. Well, the reason is simple because here we are moving a lot of joints, and the reason why is because we need a lot of control on the curvature. Because if you watch, I don't know, like those really cool Disney movie or latest movies like Rakdra, Rapunzel, and so on, you see the eyes are so expressive. The eyelid gets such a, such a crazy curvature and bendy and everything, you know. So we really need control on that. So that's why what we are trying to achieve with this tutorial. And I call it cartoony because it's mostly for cartoony and it's a really good base for a full uh, cartoony eye where you start adding stuff later like uh, squashy and stretch eye or actually moving the eye around on the face. But this is uh, extra layer of deformation that are com coming after that. You know? And also, if it was a more realistic eye, we wouldn't need that much control. So we could save quite a bit of joints and save all some performance and use those performance somewhere else, like for corrective shapes, so extra details here and there, you know? So that's why uh, I call it this, this kind of setup, cartoony one, okay? So with that said, the first step, if you guys remember when I explained it, we are going to use a curve to control the those bones. Okay, so I'm gonna use a script for that, and um, I'm going to provide this script. We're not gonna write it together because it's a bit long, but actually I made a tutorial for that. Basically, we need to get the U parameter along a curve, and we use this. Um, this parameter to attach the object on the curve. So the tutorial is this one. You can find it on my Vimeo channel. So my Python API tip and tricks deal with pointers. And I'm doing the exactly same things there. Okay? So let's get started. So here is the script. Let's go quickly through it. So basically I have a point. It's actually my source point. I get a parameter. And I return a parameter. Okay. Also, there is a get back path object. Uh, sorry, procedure, which from a string it's giving me back an M object, or in this case, a back path object. Okay. So this is just a small part because we will need to to create the point on curve node and so on. Okay. So let's get started. So first of all, what we need to do. Let's import a couple of Maya commands and open Maya. And then we need the selection, of course. So again, selection equal to commands dot list selected. It was one. Hmm, my keyboard is low on battery. Hopefully, it won't shut down right in the middle of the tutorial. I will have to stop and change the battery. But anyway, so now we have the selection for every locator for essence selection. We are going to do something. What we also need is a curve. Okay, so for now we put the curve here as temp. Later we create the curve and we pass these arguments here. Okay, so for every this we need the position. So position equal to x form. Here we remove the locator one is use s. We get the translate and then here. We call the function that I declare here. Actually, I'm not sure. I run it, so we do that just in case. Here we go. So Maya knows it, and we need to provide a point and a curve. So the point is going to be our locator position, and the curve is going to be our curve argument. Okay. So let's just create really quick the curve so we have it. Okay. So let's hide the mesh really quick. This one was the eye, if it's not wrong, yes. So re rename the layer as well. Eye layer. 
mesh layer like that. So we find that and we need those locators. So we select them, we idle it select, and now we're going to draw a curve, one point for each. Okay, so create CV curve two. It's high density curve, so it doesn't really matter if it's cubic or linear, but we're going to create a cubic one, just in case, and we're going to press B to snap. Okay, right now Maya doesn't let me see the curve, so we need to do show isolate auto load new object. So now when I'm going to create the curve, it will be visible. Perfect. That's snap it, snap it, snap it. Mm -hmm. Those are really close to each other. Here we go. Uh, actually, the cubic is not keeping the definition as much as I wanted, so we're going to create a linear one. Perfect. So I change the option to linear, and here we go. So I'm sure 100% my my locator are on the curve. The function is actually taking care of check that, but you know, if it's not on the curve, it will snap it to the curve. So we are going to move the bone, and we actually don't want that. There we go. So that's our curve. If I'm not wrong, yes, I need to pass the shape of the curve. So let's copy the shape name and let's put it here. So we should be should be good to go. Let's see. Let's select the locators like that and let's run it and it work. So we can use, even use a print here just to quickly visualize. See, and we get out the U parameter. Perfect. So we save that as a U. Now we need to create the quantum curve info node. So if we open the node editor, ooh, huge. I usually work with two monitors and more. This one was in the second one. Okay, so we need a point. No, curve point. Was it? What? Mm -hmm. Point on curve info. Here we go. So now that we have it, we check really quick. So we actually need to provide an input curve in the parameter and that will give us a position. Okay, so let's copy that because I want to remember the name. Select that. So let's go and create the node. Point on curve info node is equal to commands dot create node. Point on curve info. As a name, let's give it a nice name. So basically, we are going to use the same name of the locator, get rid of lock, and we add the suffix PCI. Okay, so name is equal to s dot replace Oops. lock with PCI. Let's just print name. To see if it's correct. There we go. I don't have anything selected, so it's not printing anything. Here we go, works. So now we're going to use that name for the node. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to set the attribute. Or actually, first let's connect the curve. So commands dot connect. Attribute, we need to connect the curve, the word space, or the space, which actually is the, the curve in word space, and we're going to connect that with the PCI to sort of the node to input curve, like that. There we go, and then we need to set, set the attribute. Of our node, which is called parameter, parameter to actually our U value. 
there we go so should work okay let's run it and we got an error oh typo word space my bad there we go looks like it worked let's see yes we have all our all point of curve so now we actually need to connect that so let's do that there we go we need to connect the output it's actually I don't remember the name so let's guess it's probably output rotation out translation out rotation don't remember so let's do that so let's run it again let's select the curve let's check the node and what is the output is result position yes should be position let's see let's undo that again there we go select them and then command connect attribute is y plus dot position to our locator plus t which stands for translation so cross your finger guys and here we go looks like it worked our locator is connected perfectly so actually now we move the curve the locator sorry guys I actually stopped the tutorial here because I pressed F8 is actually the screen record hotkey to stop the recording sorry about that so what I was saying, if we select the curve and we move, see that now the locator is following the curve. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's quickly rename the curve like L applet high. Because this is the high density, and let's call it. Well, pi should be fine. We see if later we need more specific name. So now we do the same for the lower curve. So let's remove the. Mm, guys, let's select. Let's select all the locators and let's pick the corner because we need that as well. Let's go pick the other corner like that. Perfectly. And again, isolate select. Let's check that auto load is correct. And now let's create the next curve. Let's try to be consistent. So we started from the inside corner and went to the outside. And we are going to do that again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I really don't like this corner here is angle but that's how the mesh is so we need to deal with that usually the inside corner might give some trouble when the modeler try to give a hyper real look but we can deal with that in thousands of different ways like correctives or everything okay, so that's our curve let's rename that so let's switch from up low or down it's the same. Let's get the shape name and let's place in our curve argument like that. Now we select again our locator and select curve and let's run the script. Error. Ooh, true. We don't have to select the corners because the corners are already connected. So now if we run, everything should be fine. Perfect. Everything works. I was going to press F8 again. I hate that. Okay. So now everything is connected. So if we if I move the curve up and down, see our bones are following correctly like that so the problem is now that 
this curve is really high resolution, okay? So it's kind of pain for the animators to move. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a low resolution curve to drive the high resolution one, okay? So what we need to do is to create the low resolution curve. So I think we're going to use something like one, two, three, four, five points. So two corners, one in the middle, and two extra one between the middle and the corner. So let's hide the bones really quick. That and let's bring up the option. And this time it's going to be cubic. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, here there is the lovely corner. But never mind. We're gonna deal with that. So let's snap the curve. So we said somewhere in the middle. So one quarter, the middle, and here, and let's see. There we go. Should be fine. Okay. So actually, instead of using a, a control vertex curve, you can actually use the edit point curve. So your curve is going to pass exactly through the curve, but we are actually going to modify that the curve manually to make it fit a little bit better. Like that. Let's go in the front. Uh, come on. So let's play a little with the position of the control vertex. There we go. So we are matching. Perfect. So now let's go actually in the top view. It's actually pretty good already. Maybe a little bit on the front. Oh, that's cool. I like it. Okay, so let's rename this curve. Uh, I can access the, the outline anymore, so I need to hide some time slider, timeline. There we go. So, and we are going to rename that instead of high, let's call it low, so low density. Okay, perfect. So now what we need to do is to drive somehow the low curve, the high curve. And we're going to do that with a wire deformer. So let's get three. Because I never remember which one is the order for the wire deformer. I believe first the target and then the source, but I'm not so sure. So let's jump in the deformers tab. And let's click on wire tool. So yes, select the shape to the form. So the target is the high. And then we have the select the, <coughs> the driver. Okay, so now if we go in component mode, see we are driving in the high density curve, the low density one. So if we show the bones. See that our eyelid is actually deforming as well. And let's notice that. So since our bones are in main constraint, doesn't matter how bad we deform the curve. See, they're always staying on the top of the mesh. So even if we pull like that on the side, let's show the eye mesh. So even if we push, push a lot on the side, we are always sliding. You see? On the eye, on the eyeball, and that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's our first step. And then what we need to do is do the same for the lower curve. So again, let's hide the bones, joints. Here we go. Hidden, and let's create a CD 
or we can try an AP curve tool. So I will see the difference. AP curve tool, cubic, perfect. So let's snap to the, to the corner here. Then somewhat one third, middle, something like that. And the corner here again. You see, it's not always that easy to make in the curve match, but probably this is one of the best results we can get. But let's try to mess with that a little manually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got some extra control vertex we actually don't want. So we're gonna redo the curve, but let's try this time we're gonna stick on the CV curve tool. There we go. So here middle. There we go. I always forget that those AP curve, edit point curve, always create some extra geometry. Sorry, and extra control vertex. In this case, we don't want because the number on the CV is actually pretty important for us. Because for every CV, we're going to have a control. So, start matching. Looks good to me. And here, of course, on the corner, we cannot make it match it really good because we have some weird curve, but we work anyway. Cool, so let's rename that again. So, L up is low, it's going to be L down, leap low down. There we go. So, again, create the former. Wire tool, let's select the, the source, so L down, leap high, and select upper. There we go, so let's see if everything worked. No, I want to select the high resolution one. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go quickly rename the wire deformers. So let's give the same name of the curve. We just change curve to WR, which stands for wire. So there we go. This is going to be up and WR. Here we go. So let's quickly save that. So here we go. So, if for any reason we have some trouble, I can restart from this part. Okay, so what we need to do next, we can actually create some controls for the high limb, okay? 